The Pittsburgh Business Report is provided free to the public with contributions from Doug Farrell, makeup artist, Sephora of the South Hills Village Mall, Sabika Jewelry, the Post Office Catering Group, Allure Hair Designs and Mini Spa, Viewpoint Studios. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Business Report. I'm Donna Klein. Today we're going to talk about taxes and specifically what changes in tax policies are coming down the pipeline that might impact you and your portfolio. To help us discuss this uh, very interesting subject matter, we have Mark Reichel. Mark Reichel, you are with BCR Financial. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. So there are three main topics we want to talk about today that people may or may not be aware of. Number one, the tax rate for various income brackets is changing. Changes in estate tax rules are coming up soon. And there's going to be a big change in IRAs or IRAs versus Roth IRAs. So let's talk about the tax rate for various income brackets. That's going up? Uh, yes. What's going to happen between this year and next year, you're going to see that tax brackets will be changing. Right now, the highest wage earners pay 35% as the highest federal income tax. Starting next year, that number will go back to rates that they used to have uh, before the Bush tax cuts came uh -huh. in. And the new rate starting next year will be 39.6%. What's the income cutoff for that? Well, what happens, so you might be saying to yourself, well, is that going to affect me or not? That's, that's the highest tax bracket that we'll be seeing. So if your taxable income is around the $380,000, $390,000 limit, then you're going to be paying 39.6, not 35. So for the majority of the people, no big deal. It's not going to affect them. But what does change is if you're looking at tax brackets for this year and last year, you were in a 10% tax bracket if you made anywhere around $8,700 of taxable income or less. What's going to happen going into next year is there will not be a 10% tax bracket any longer for married couples. It will be 15% up to about, I think the number is about $87,000. So everybody's going to be affected with higher tax bills. Obviously the people that make the largest amount of money will be impacted the most. Instead of 10%, 15%, 28% on up to 35, it'll go 15 and then you'll see 28% taxes, 36% taxes. It's just a it's an incremental tax increase based on the fact that the government needs additional tax dollars. The other thing I wanted to talk about really was uh, changes in estate tax rules. You you know a lot about this subject. It's what you do with your wealth, I guess, when you move on. Well, what, when you move on. Mm -hmm. A nice way of saying when you pass away, yes, the government uh, taxes your estate. And it's an interesting, it's a, actually it's an incredible conversation topic for these days because there's so much change. What's happening right now is in 2010, if you pass away, you can pass an unlimited amount of money on to your beneficiaries. So Bill Gates, as an example, could, could die and pass away billions and billions of dollars to his beneficiaries with zero federal estate tax. Come 2011, what happens at this point in time, and there's a lot of conversation as to what uh, the government will do to maybe make a change, but right now, the rules say that if you die in 2011, anything over $1 million, you start to pay federal estate taxes on. Does that mean you, know, you have your stock holdings, you have your home, all of those? What makes up your gross yeah, estate? It's, yeah. That's actually a really good question because you think, well, if I have a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank, I'm under that million dollar level. Now this year, it doesn't matter. Again, we're talking about next year. But what happens if you work and maybe you have a spouse that stays at home and you have a life insurance policy? It's quite easy these days when you start looking at how much life insurance you have to get drastically over a million dollar number. So to answer your question, it's the value of your house. Uncle Sam can value your possessions. Typically, there's not a lot of value there. Uh, it'll take your investments, take your retirement plans, and depending on how you own your life insurance, if you own it yourself versus in a trust, that number goes in. So you could technically have $100 in the bank and a $2 million life insurance policy and have federal estate tax problems. So you mentioned trust. So if you are trying to avoid these types of taxes, for your children or whoever is you know your beneficiary then you, you open a trust I mean what's the best way to get around that right now well again right now it's a very it's it's a very fluid situation right now you can basically have whatever you want and not have to worry about taxes 
but people don't know when they're going to pass away. And what we're struggling with as financial advisors these days is how do you plan for next year or going forward when you don't know what the rules are yet? So mm -hmm. it's trying to make a decision based on something that you have no information on. So what you can do is you can do uh, certain estate planning that involves trusts. What a trust is, is instead of you owning this asset, you're controlling it, it's in your possession, you put it in another entity that basically holds this asset for you. And when you start to ask yourself, is this in my estate or not? Do I have to pay taxes on this or not? It basically comes down to control. If you control the asset, Donna, and you can change it, or you can change your mind, or you can use it for something, then it's in your control. If it's in a trust that you cannot change, that you don't have access to, then it's considered out of your estate. But life insurance, there's really nothing, no way to shelter that? I mean, Well, no, that's not true. Let's okay. say that um, you stay home with your two children and your husband works and has a life insurance policy. Okay. Say he owns it, he's, uh, he's the uh, insured person and you're the beneficiary. If he passes away, they send you a check for the life insurance and that's in your estate. What you can do, uh, depending on what your goals are, is you can hold or open up a trust. It, an attorney draws that up for you, and it's basically a non-living person that then can own this life insurance policy. So in your example, your husband's the owner, let's say, or you are. He's the insured. You're the beneficiary. You get paid the money directly to you right. when he passes away, and it's in your estate. If you have a trust that owns this life insurance policy mm -hmm. next year, Right now, it's slated you can't have over a million dollars mm -hmm. without federal state tax issues. You can have this insurance policy owned by a trust. The beneficiary is the trust, mm -hmm. and your husband's still the insured party. So what happens then is it's not in your estate. That check is then sent to this trust and not you directly. Now, what happens with the trust, because you want to pay the bills, pay right. the mortgage, pay for your children's college education, that there are certain directions that this trust is given when you set it up. And it gives you the ability to take money out for living expenses, to pay your mortgage, pay, pay all those bills. So it's a way of basically sheltering some tax mm -hmm. from assets or life insurance that you possess. IRA versus Roth. First explain just briefly to our viewers up until now what the main differences have been in a Roth versus a regular IRA. Sure, uh, traditional IRA. In the typical fashion, you put money into it. Some people can take a tax write-off, and some people can't. But you put money into an IRA, and the purpose of that is it grows tax deferred. You don't pay any taxes on it along the way. And then when you retire, you take the money out and you pay taxes then. So for instance, let's say you put $6,000, you're 50 years old, you can put $6,000 into an IRA. And that money grows to, let's say, $15,000, and then you retire and cash it out. What happens then is you pay tax on the $15,000 that, that this account grew to uh, versus a, a Roth IRA, which is a really big topic these days. You do not get a tax write-off for a Roth IRA where the traditional IRA you might, depending on if you have a retirement plan at work, you might be able to write it off on your taxes. But the biggest thing about the Roth IRA is you put your $6,000 in there. In the example, it grows to $15,000 and that money is then tax-free in retirement. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the government has now let everybody basically convert an IRA to a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. which is great for the tax-free growth. Right. Very importantly, what happens though, is the government has allowed us to then pay the taxes. You can pay it all up front, or you can spread the taxes out over the following two years. Oh, two years. Mm -hmm. Two years, you're, you're correct. So. Everybody loves that. I can do it now and pay it later. Mm -hmm. If you read a little bit more into the fine print on converting to a Roth IRA, you're paying taxes at following year's tax brackets. And one of the things we talked about 10 minutes ago is taxes are going, the highest tax bracket's 35%, right. it's going to 39.6. You'll then be paying taxes at whatever the next year's tax brackets mm -hmm. are, which aren't defined. For the Roth conversion to make the most sense, you have to be in the same or higher tax bracket in retirement. Wow, there's really a lot involved in it, but I really appreciate you coming in to shed a little light on some of the many tax changes that are coming, but the three biggies, I guess you would say. So thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for your time. For more information on our guests or upcoming shows, search for the Pittsburgh Business Report online at YouTube or Facebook.